Today, director Hideo Kojima is known mostly for his spy action saga Metal Gear Solid. But before that series even existed, Kojima was already revolutionizing the form games would take in the 21st century. In this video essay, we'll be discussing his 1988 PC-88 adventure title, Snatcher. Specifically, we'll look at Snatcher as a proto-open world, like the kind found today in games, of course, like Grand Theft Auto. From 1988 to 1994, Snatcher would take several remakes to get right, and it would still be played by very few people in the West. But it made a ton of innovations that were ahead of the open world curve and very indicative of the types of games that its creator, Hideo Kojima, would later make. It's a near-future neon cyberpunk detective game one where we play as Gillian Seed on his first night as a new member of the secret police force, Junker. The group's purpose is exposing and eliminating the machinations of a secret foe, the stealthy and deadly bioroids called, of course, Snatchers. I'm no cop, I'm a junker. I couldn't care less if you're a buyer, a pusher, or what. What I want to know is if you're a snatcher or human. Snatchers steal the bodies of prominent members of society. They can sweat, bleed, and even breathe. Snatchers could be anywhere, masquerading as anyone. It's the perfect setup, in other words, to an open world investigation. As Gillian, assisted by the rest of Junker and his navigator, Metal Gear Mark II. Metal, introduce yourself. Yes, sir. Pleased to meet you, Gillian. I am Metal Gear Mark II. I am programmed to be your personal assistant. Metal Gear? That's a pretty weird name. Oh, he's cute. Uh, thank you. We have for our mission the entire artificial island of Neo Kobe to explore. Modeled geographically on the real-life Kobe artificial landmass Port Island, which of course served as the setting for a major influence on Hideo Kojima, Yuji Horii's The Portopia Serial Murders in 1983, in truth, Neo Kobe has the soul of New York City. It's also a version of Japan right after the Second World War. What I mean is Neo Kobe, really Snatcher's star, is a diverse place with massive wealth inequality, super condensed urban sprawl, and tons of secrets and shadows lurking beneath the pallid, omnipresent neon glow. The 
the game transpires over a single night, giving its setting an even stronger sense of scale and complexity. Because we are seeing so much going on here over such a short period of time, it makes the city seem immense. But that has to do with multiple factors. Chief among them, the game's interface. Snatcher as an investigation game is all about observing and interrogating our world. The game dispenses with a point-and-click interface, streamlining the business of gameplay. But in the trade-off, Snatcher becomes more systems-level complex. There are multiple systems for observing, closely investigating, and or showing. That's where Snatcher, as an adventure game, starts to feel open-world, even sandbox-adjacent at times. Instead of scenarios always having one right action alone, as conventional of the era's adventure games, any and all possible available player actions are usually fair game. What I mean is that you have a lot of interesting choices in Snatcher. And every decision, as much as possible, will enhance the sense of solving its central mysteries yourself. Snatcher is built to reward and encourage non-lateral, independent thought. Like a modern open-world sandbox game of today, you don't have to simply follow the game's directions leading you down the linear main plot. You can set out on your own and search for alternate solutions, secret discoveries, and hidden content. You can even develop relationships with NPCs like Jamie, Napoleon, and Mika, relationships that gradually change in response to earlier actions over time. The game rewards diligence with what today we might call side missions, little vignettes, and chance encounters, not to mention easter eggs, all designed to make Neo Kobe more real. But that brings us to the real reason that Snatcher is so ahead of its time, perhaps. The setting. Surprising for such a story-centric game, Snatcher is more than anything about bringing players a sense of really visiting its squalid yet grand cityscape. The world map is divided into rich districts and poor along the island's north-south dividing line. Traveling back and forth across this division, Gillian and his robo-navigator, Mark II, really get to live out their cyberpunk noir. Noirs are all about exploring the seedy underbelly life conceals, about interrogating the true nature of this monster we call society, Stepping into the parts of Neo Kobe that are invisible to the pedestrian's naked eye, the player is provided a genuine impression of social stratification, and of human nature too, no less so than when we are being shown data and graphs of the human condition literally by Metal Gear's analysis when he say finds a scrap of human hair or skin tissue. We visit suburbs and looming corporate towers, we visit derelict factories, slums, black markets, and the red light district. In one memorable chase scene, the entire Neo Kobe city sprawls out visibly around us. Nearly every visual detail in this game is there to provide a solid sense of location. Yeah, 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 yeah. The city is full of detail, hiding in plain sight like a snatcher just beneath the surface. The game was absolutely filled to the brim with easter eggs. Often these drove home the sense of intrigue and exploration that were necessary for such a game. There is a scopophilic dimension to Snatcher, a love and obsession with the image. Nice. 
Almost everything we do takes place in the confines of Gillian's skull. Snatcher slowed down and formalized mechanics of perception, so that even if many areas are little more than static 2D images, they still offer an immersive sense of presence. Each thought plays out at our direction one by one, slowing down what in reality would feel more like it's happening all at once. This play-by-play -play rhythm allowed the player a detailed experience, one that subtly changed over playthroughs, and could stand in as a facsimile for our perception in this game world. Gamifying observation made everything you did much more part of the gameplay, because now observation, even perception themselves, were mediated by menus and commands, were integral to the overall game. I can't stress how differently that works from a more typical adventure game of the time. Those games often played out more like a guessing game, and Snatcher even so-called wrong decisions or intuitions often lead somewhere within the game space. That in of itself felt very non-linear, very proto-open world. In all adventure games, you're trying to solve mysteries and put together puzzles. Snatcher made this investigative process and mindset more integral to the overall game. What made this borderline open world was you could show anything to anyone, returning to old persons of interest with new evidence to discuss. And there actually is, I should say, one sort of point-and-click style scenario, except it's directed by Flashlight, maintaining the conceit of one perception at a time. There are also different events triggerable by revisiting certain locations, like Alton Plaza with its large bustling crowds. Some side quests and even key intel require diligent and concerted searching. Refined investigation skills to uncover. You have a sense in Snatcher you'll never know what to expect next. Another example of Snatcher as a proto-open world involves the supercomputer Gaudi, localized in the Sega CD port as Jordan. This was a seriously ahead of its time feature. At any time, players could delve into the Alpha 1 mainframe to look up persons of interest, and even study Wikipedia-esque entries all about the game's world and lore. As if that wasn't enough, Snatcher, like Portopia Serial Murders, also utilized a phone system. You can find several different numbers and contacts off the beaten trail, and you could never be sure which ones were still out there, yet to be found. This, of course, would foreground Kojima's later games and their codec radio calls. Yo, Snake, looking good today. The same obsessive quality coincided with the core gameplay loop, as there's no telling what jaw-dropping tidbit, hilarious gag, or ominous foreshadowing you may have missed by not selecting, say, the same dialogue option more than once, revisiting the same location, 
or approaching the same ACE files in a new way. The game's designed to feel really good to explore and investigate. This can only work as a proto-open world, almost non-linear game where you're free to explore at will. Yet unlike many modern sandbox open worlds, Snatcher had no problem reconciling its main story and moment-to-moment -moment gameplay. Snatcher used all this open-endedness to put you inside the head of an investigator. In that regard, we might compare it to a novel with an unreliable narrator. It just so happens it's in partial second-person perspective. That unreliable narrator, in other words, isn't just Gillian, it's you. If we compare Snatcher to a 21st century open world detective game like, say, L.A. Noire, it's surprising how much better Snatcher fits this genre. For all its modern technology and glossy style, L.A. Noire is built rather like a conventional adventure game. There are right deductions and decisions to make, and there are wrong ones. In Snatcher, how Gillian will solve the case is where the gameplay lives, not whether or not he will, but how. Yes, there are many scenarios like puzzles with a right answer. But the essential game design is built around a kind of non-linearity, seamlessness, and investigatory verve that I've frankly yet to see not only in games of its era, but even in modern games, in any non-Kojima detective game. With its proto-open world and unique emphasis on perception in the moment, on the fallibility and caprice of the human interrogator, Snatcher was hugely advanced, in terms of maybe not technology, but definitely ideas. So much world building takes place via those data entries on Jordan, there we learn about, for example, the amusement park Lucasland, robo musicals, and the street drug Liquid Sky. World building is, of course, a vital component of any open world game. It may be unfamiliar to fans of Kojima's espionage action games, but clearly there is much more to Snatcher than meets the eye. Fitting for a game about bioroids who steal your skin. Until next time. Boss.